1945. World War II has just ended. The Allied nations have won a complete victory. The world is at peace once more. Do you remember how Bergen County looked in 1945? It was relaxing country living. Our suburban areas, for the most part, were undeveloped. Our countryside was picturesque with cornfields. Perhaps many of us remember the countless acres of wastelands and marshes with their familiar cattails. Here and there, one could even find an old-fashioned general store, which often doubled as the town post office. Yes, Bergen County was growing, but the pace was leisurely. The growth, barely noticeable. But the moment wartime restrictions were lifted on steel and other critical materials, things began to happen. Bergen County was on the move. With dramatic suddenness, fields were uprooted, woodlands were cleared, large housing and apartment developments began popping out all over. The building boom was on. Big industry also joined the unprecedented rush to our county. Hundreds of manufacturing and distributing firms found it advantageous to move here. Sprawling meadowlands gave way to huge industrial centers. The largest of the many industrial giants which have come to Bergen County since the end of World War II is this automobile assembly plant, which occupies 30 acres near Route 17 in Mawa. As our population skyrocketed, schools became overcrowded, as did our churches. Many communities were forced to build new schools or add wings to their present structures. New places of worship were rushed to completion, or old churches were enlarged to meet the ever-increasing demand for more space. The shortage of beds in our voluntary hospitals proved so serious that Hackensack Hospital built a wing which added 138 more beds. Englewood Hospital increased its bed capacity by 100. Holy Name Hospital enlarged its facilities to add 116 more beds. Hasbrook Heights Hospital built a new wing. The hospital was built in Ridgewood with a bed capacity of 110. Construction of still another new hospital in Westwood began in 1957. The impact of the county's sudden and spectacular post-war growth was equally felt by the public utilities. Here is the new reservoir of the Hackensack Water Company completed in 1956 to increase its water reserves by five and a half billion gallons. Rising in the meadows of Ridgefield is this huge electrical power station of the Public Service Electric and Gas Company on which construction started in 1956. This generating station will have a rated capacity of 580,000 kilowatts. The New Jersey Bell Telephone Company was called upon to install 227,000 more telephones in Bergen County alone during the first 12 years after World War II. Since rapid population growth also means an enormously expanded potential market for food, clothing, and supplies, mammoth shopping centers were attracted to Bergen County. These multi-million dollar projects include more than 100 stores and parking space for about 12,000 cars. The rapid residential and industrial growth of our county soon made apparent the need for additional highway facilities. Among the first to be built was the Palisades Interstate Parkway, linking the George Washington Bridge with New York State. The fabulous New Jersey Turnpike divided the Meadowlands of eastern Bergen County. The Garden State Parkway was extended from Passaic County, cutting through the old celery farms in Paramus and the apple orchards in the Pascack Valley to connect with the New York State Thruway. However, such progress had its price. 
hundreds of homes in the paths of these modern fast speed superhighways had to be moved or demolished. Concrete and asphalt were beginning to replace the once familiar green look of historical Bergen County. Our county owned roads, which like our state highways had been adequate only a few years ago, were suddenly outmoded. The Board of Freeholders launched a long-range road rebuilding program. Priority was given, for example, to the widening of Forest Avenue and Schrallenberg Road, two main county arteries. Major county bridges are steadily being replaced by larger and more modern spans. Sewage disposal fast became a health menace in many communities. Municipal treatment plants could not meet the increased schools, more roads, in fact, more of all public facilities. Here was a health problem which would have seriously inhibited the growth of many towns had the Board of Freeholders not taken the leadership by creating the Bergen County Sewer Authority. It was this body, with the cooperation of the freeholders, which built a trunk line sewer system and a common treatment plant to serve 12 municipalities. The authority's facilities are now being extended to serve 16 more communities. Realizing that desirable park properties were rapidly being acquired by home builders and industry, the Board of Freeholders took a vital step to preserve the suburban character of our county by establishing the Bergen County Park Commission. More than 3,000 acres of desirable land have since been acquired for park purposes and many areas are now opened for public use. As the county continued to grow, it became apparent that there was a need for a specialized countywide educational service. Again, the freeholders took the initiative by constructing the County Vocational and Technical High School, which today has an enrollment of 700 students. The school is also used for adult education in the evening. To help meet the critical need for additional hospital facilities in Bergen County, the Board of Freeholders built this nine-story county hospital in Paramus. Opened in 1953, it has a bed capacity of 365. When many communities were faced with still another problem, that of refuse disposal, the freeholders sponsored a sanitary landfill operation in the Overpeck Meadows. This project not only is assisting towns in the disposal of their refuse, but is also reclaiming vast acres of wasteland for future use as a county park. No agency or facility in the county could escape the post-war pressure of a steadily mounting population. Courtroom and jury room space became seriously inadequate. There also developed an urgent need for more county administrative space. This led to the groundbreaking in 1957 of a new wing to connect the courthouse, county administrative building, and the county jail. County government also took the leadership in building a diagnostic center with special facilities for the care of older delinquent children. Now all of this has happened since 1945. But what about tomorrow? What does the future hold for Bergen County? Because of its proximity to New York City and the many other advantages it offers, Bergen County's population will continue to rise spectacularly. Building proceeds at an incredibly fast pace. Industry is still moving here. With an eye to the future, the Board of Freeholders is constantly striving to keep ahead of this population tidal wave. Additional county parks are being developed. The people voted funds for these parks. Here, for example, is the 18-hole county golf course at Rockley, on which construction began in 1957. Plans are complete for many new or improved roads and bridges. 
The need has been anticipated for expansion of the vocational school, Bergen Pines Hospital, and other buildings. Soon, a county penitentiary must be built. The burdens and responsibilities of government, both at the county and municipal level, have greatly increased since 1945. The price of our progress is being bought with deflated dollars. A school, for instance, which cost a million dollars in 1945, might cost as much as two million dollars today. Because our dollars only buy about one half as much as they did in 1945, it has become necessary to raise wages many times. And yet the number of daily working hours remain the same. All workers, whether in business or government, naturally receive a higher salary today than at the close of World War II. This is one of the principal reasons why government costs have increased. As the value of the dollar goes down, the number of tax dollars required to pay for essential governmental services goes up. The additional tax income which our county and municipal governments have received from an increased population has not been sufficient to meet the simultaneous demand for new schools, sewers, roads, bridges, parks, more government employees, and salary increases. Increasing costs are a part of the price of progress and sudden growth. Too many of us are inclined to think of government only in terms of what we pay in taxes rather than what we receive in government services. And yet, people want more services. The records show that the demand for additional county governmental services has more than doubled since 1945. Now surely we don't want our children to go uneducated for lack of school facilities, our sick and injured to suffer for want of hospital facilities. All of us want good roads, bridges, police and fire protection, health services and recreational facilities. And because we want these things, we must share the cost. Government problems in 1945 were mainly routine, but that figure has changed because our county has changed and because our whole national economy prices. Then no longer can we have efficient government at yesteryear's cost. Government's greatest need today is to bring about a closer relationship with those whom it serves. Where there is public interest, there is public understanding. Where there is public understanding, there will always be good government.